Okay, welcome everyone. Today it's time for more Vintage Cube here on my YouTube channel. Opened yet another, yeah, not the best pack. So let's see what we have here. We have a blue duel, blue white, I like that. We have a bad reanimation spell. We have a solid catch all removal. Little surveil action. Red aggro card. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Time Spiral definitely. That's just not, not my style. I mean, I'm not I'm not the biggest Time Spiral guy out there. It can definitely lead to some like fun games, but for me, I don't really win as much with those decks. So yeah, I'm gonna take the Tundra and yeah, see see where that takes me. Okay. That took me to at least a pack where the best card is a blue card, and uh, that's not half bad. I like Mystic Confluence more than Jace the Mind Sculptor, despite being one uh, more expensive. Magic these days is a lot about, you know, playing to the board, etc. So a card like Jace the Mind Sculptor is, while still solid, it's, it's way harder for that card to, you know, run away with the game these days. Um, yeah, let's take Mystic Confluence. This is not a... Close to an ideal start to the draft, but it is some kind of direction. If I can go blue-white control, but you never know. The thing is, Mystic Confluence basically only good in like the bigger blue decks. Very hard to imagine that I play like I don't know white blue tempo aggro and Mystic Confluence is a good card. So I'm looking to take advantage of having better spells in the late game here, but we need to see what. Uh, what the draft is uh, is giving me. Okay, here's a Stoneforge Mystic. Could be a cool pick early. There's a Time Warp. I'm not super high on that card, especially when I have a five drop already. Okay, okay, I could see Stoneforge Mystic. If I had any artifacts in my first two picks, I would consider Kappa Cannoneer. Okay, let's, let's try Stoneforge. I haven't drafted that card in a while. Aside from, you know, having it super late in the draft, and then it's like, oh, I have a Glimmer Lens or a Skull Clamp. Let's just take the Stoneforge. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if things pan out, we have a sweet Stoneblade control deck, just like Old Times and Legacy. All right, what do we get? Spell Pierce, very solid. Retrofit of Foundry, very solid. Underground Sea, very good. Hmm, maybe this is just spell piece. I try and stay blue white. If I had taken the Kappa Cannoneer, I could have taken Retrofitter, but I haven't. So let's take Spell Pierce. The black is tempting. So is the Windswept Teeth actually, but I think Spell Pierce is just a tiny bit better than um, helping my man out at this stage. I don't. I wouldn't mind at all if anybody took uh, Windswept Teeth out of that pack. That would be super solid as well. Make sure your mana base is solid. That's uh, that's like a classic pitfall to, to not win enough games where your mana can't cast the early, what do I know, oust, and you, then you can't cast turn four cryptic command. You're sitting there on two planes and two islands. Stuff like that, right? Okay, so here the best card is probably like Bold or Caracas. So thankfully for us, we can take Caracas. It will, I mean, in a white mana base, it's just awesome. Protecting my own stuff, bouncing the opponent's stuff. Um, aside from Caracas and Lightning Bolt, I guess I would play Ending, maybe speculate on Jetmir's Garden. But yeah, pretty happy with Caracas here. Okay, th this pack doesn't look that great on the surface, but I actually think Novice Inspector is just solid. Um, there's even some small artifact synergy with it, the clue, um, or Tinker and stuff. And it's just a good speed bump in a, in a controlling deck. Otherwise, I don't even know what I would take. Maybe speculate on some of the splashes here. But I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, with Novice Inspector. Okay, so here we have the interaction I talked about earlier, Stoneforge for Glimmerlands. I actually think that's solid. I think it's better than um, Stoneforge for Shadow Spear. I think it's better than just adding Image or Loran to the deck. So yeah, let's take Glimmerlands. I like drafting white, but I don't do it on purpose, if that makes sense. I know I've been drafting it. I don't have the numbers or anything, but I've at least been, been drafting it recently. And oftentimes it's either because 
the white card is better than whatever else was in that pack, or it's simply just open. Okay, get lost. I, that, that card is uh, serviceable. Let me put it that way. I think it's like Path to Exile tier, where if you play it early, the advantage of the map tokens can be kind of annoying, um, but it's just unconditional remove whatever later in the game, so decent, decent card for sure. I wonder, I'm trying to keep track of it if blue is if blue is even open, I have no problem going into mono white. If it's not the case, it, okay, yeah, th this is a pretty awesome card to wheel. Like, I don't know, top ten white card or something along those lines. Like, very awesome. Uh, but it is hard to cast. You need to be dedicated, like blue white control, green white with very many like white. White mana sources for it to be good, so it, it, I mean it makes sense. But yeah, I'm very happy with that. Pretty insane wheel. And right now the the blue splash is uh, hanging on by a thread. Let's just take touch the spirit realm here. Basically, if I play mono white, I might need it to have enough playables. But if I play two colors, I don't always play this card. But it is it is just nice, like. Hard removal, get rid of whatever. Can even do some some good stuff with the channel ability, like save your own guys. I think one of the best things is like Palace Jailer or Solitude. Or so we'd be looking to get anyway. Hmm, so let's see. I'm not the biggest recruiter fan in the world, but Lingering Souls requires a splash. Hmm, I'm actually gonna gamble. I'm not even let's not even call it a gamble. I'm gonna take the Lingering Souls. I uh and there's an adversary that's pretty amazing. Um if I get, I can sideboard the Sunfall. If I get some kind of black splash, I can I can play the Souls, no problem. If I don't, I can just move it to the sideboard, it's fine. I'm really not the biggest recruiter fan. I think it's too much too much mana to, to go get a creature. If you have something like Skull Clamp or maybe Solitude already, you can you can definitely convince me, but yeah. Not the most exciting thing. Okay, so we're in white, so we can't really complain too much. Let's see. I'm leaning towards either Delta to bolster the blue without really knowing if I'm going to need it. Or just take Figure of Destiny and try and wheel Staff and, and get like two, two good white cards out of the deal. Will I move away from blue? Yeah, I actually think I will. I'll move, move, move away from blue here. I'll regret it if I get something like Ancestral or Time Walk, but I think those circumstances are good enough that I'm willing to accept that. Okay, Luminarch es Esperant. I love that card. It's uh, one of the best two drops for the deck, I would say. Can make the deck go a bit longer while still being a decent aggro card. Um, I like having cards that favor me in the draw-go situation that will inevitably come up, and if they don't, it means I'm running over the opposition, so... I like that card a lot. So right now I'm not playing Mystic Confluence. I could see myself splashing the Spell Pierce if I get, I don't know, one more duel and a fetch or something. I, I, I like that archetype. Like blue, um, white, white aggro with a little bit of counter backup. So right now let's put these over here because I actually have to work on my mana in order to play them and these cards are perfectly fine. Yeah, thanks so much for joining me again today. It means a lot. Awesome to have an audience. Definitely motivates me to open up the program every day and uh, get some, some sweet footage of the interwebs. All right, what do we have here? We have Celestial Colonnade, that's not bad. And we have Winds of Abandon. This could be a case where the blue fixing is worth taking. Winds of Abandon is reasonable against some decks, but not something I would be sad about not having. Huh. So here's Wandering Emperor or Remand. So funnily enough, it's again a question of do I want to spend more picks on fixing? Then Remand is better. Or do I not want to do that? Then Wandering Emperor is better. 
Yeah, it's super close. I'm gonna take the Emperor. I could easily uh, have taken the other one. Okay, so here we have Fractured versus Blade Splicer, and I think it's Fractured. Fractured is a good curve topper. Um, yeah. So, okay, so here's Selfless Spirit. I can take that card. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me just read this. Restoration of a Ganjo. Chapter 1, search for basic planes. Chapter 2, you may discard a card, return a mana value 2 card from your graveyard. And then chapter 3, it turns into a 3-4 with Vigilance. That's kind of cool, but I'm going to go for the 2-drop instead. Here's a land versus Usher. Not an easy pick, actually. I just like the 1-drop so much. I'm going to take the 1-drop here. Mm, there's a world where I don't get any more fixing, and I need to register like one island. I need to cut the spell pierce and only run the fractured. But I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to do that. <clears throat> it seems like seems like white is uh, white is open. Okay, Sun Gold Sentinel Graveyard Hate Thalia Spell Hate. The thing is, this deck has quite a lot of cards that Thalia is making more expensive. But I think it's the most clutch like against the meta game. Okay, we did wield the staff. That's cool. Let's take Staff. There's Samwise versus Sarah Paragon. I think I'm going to go Samwise. If I get, like, Bobble, Fetchland, it's good. Paragon is good with, I don't know, Lotus and, like, super, super grindy games. But I think I can easily get, like, another 4-drop. And if I don't play the Samwise, I I'm, I'm fine with that. Let's put it in the maybe pile. There's also something to be said about Samwise Caracas. I didn't think about that when I picked it, but yeah, definitely decent. This card is also just good, good grindy card. Like later in the game, some combat happens, or the opponent plays a removal spell. I play this card. A little bit of value on it. And yeah, with Caracas, it can really ground, grind down the opposition. I'm trying to think what other white one drops we have. We obviously have Thraven Inspector. We have uh, mother, mother of Runes and Giver of Runes. That's the ones. That's the ones I was misremembering. Misrem um, I think they got rid of uh, what's it called, Student of Warfare. Eh, I don't know. I like that card, but I also like a lot of one drops are red. Not everybody agrees. That's just how it is. Everybody has their own pre preferences on how to how the the cube should be built, right? Uh, Winds of Abandon even came back. That's uh, pretty awesome for my seat. White is obviously open. Once I wield the Council's Judgment, that was basically the go sign. I think being able to read the draft and kind of deviate from your first picks, that's especially the, the last one is definitely something I, I, I need to work on because, like, Tundra Mystic Confluence... Pretty, like, if, if you like playing blue, that it looks sexy, right? And then, let's say I didn't notice, oh, white is totally open. My deck would most likely be a lot worse. Eagle was a decent pickup, by the way. As long as you have Tundra, I think it's good. If you have, if you need to go Eagle for Tap, Triome or something, it can be kind of slow, but I like it here. We can take the, we can take the Restoration. The funny thing is, we're actually pretty close to just having a full deck after two packs. So, yeah. This is going to be one of those drafts where we're, we'll be looking for upgrades, and maybe the deck building process is going to be a bit different than usual. So let's see here. I mean, I really only think there is one card for, for me here. I guess Mutable as well. If I take Godless Shrine, I'm closer to play Lingering Souls, but I think it's way more important to just take my one drop, put it in the deck, and be, and be happy. Oof. Yeah, this is not what I wanted to see. There are Swords of Plowshares and Parallax Wave, and arguably, that's like it. Top th two top three cards alongside Palace Jailer for what I have going on here. I mean, aside from power, etc., but of realistic white cards to get past. Um, I mean, Plow has a 0% chance of wheeling. Parallax Wave has, I don't know, 10. So I do that. And if Lax doesn't wheel, I get a Werewolf, uh, Werefox, sorry. So can't complain, can't complain. Okay, here's a lot of good things. I'm going to take Smuggler's Copter and try and wheel. Legionnaire, Priest, or Flicker Wisp, which I'm pretty, fairly, fairly confident I will. Smuggler's Cup, I just, I just like that card. Evasive, filters cards, good against sweepers, not to, not to mention that, because 
yeah, being good against sweepers is uh, is a big deal. Okay. Now we have blue land. Okay, maybe that's the pick. Mother of Runes. Ah, it's so good. I need to take Mother of Runes here. I'm taking Mother of Runes over Sea Chrome Coast, and I'm taking... I would have taken Sea Chrome Coast over Elite Spellbinder. <laughs> it's kind of funny. We're just getting everything for the deck here, I feel like. I don't think I'm playing Samwise and Pierce. I will splash the identity with how things are going. I might upgrade the wind. I might upgrade the touch. Yeah, let's see. I don't have any power. That's like the only thing. But other than that, I think I have more or less the best white deck you can have. Parallax Wave and Palace Jailer are the cards I'm missing right now. I also love something like Reprieve, like Mana Tithe, but... A lot of those cards are inter interchangeable. Not that they have the same effect, but it's like it makes your deck equally as strong, I would say. Here's Adeline. That's definitely something I needed to, to build the perfect white deck as well. Love Broadside Bombardiers, but not this time. The staff is looking better and better, I would say. It's good with Lens, Usher, Adeline, Blade Splicer. And Wandering Emperor, it's quite a lot of cards. But it is still a grindy card. It doesn't help in, like, fast matchups as much. Okay, I'll take Aberration here over Bodyguard. I, I could consider Cauldra Complete, but I think it's better to just have the solid card. I don't want to draw Cauldra Complete ever. Um, let's just quickly see. I need to fill 14 more slots. So, basically, now I have a full deck. So, everything from here on out only upgrades. I could see the Winds of Abandon being a sideboard card, as I said. I could see the Staff being a sideboard card. I could see Touch the Spirit Realm just being, you know, a worse card than something else. Here's Thraben Inspector with Hallowed Fountain. I think I have enough blue to support that one fracture. I'm just going to go Thraben. I want it, I want it all here. I don't think I've ever had six white one drops before. I think this is all of them. Let me know if I'm misremembering or forgetting someone. Here's a skull here's a skull clamp. Oh my goodness. I might just play mono white. Is that crazy? And go like You're out. Yeah, I might play Mono White. Mutavolt will make my mana base if I play Mono White. I don't think Restor Angel is that great. And the Parallax Wave came back. Oh my goodness. Everything came back. I think the most clutch here is going to be Containment Priest. Because, at the very least, it's like an insane sideboard card. But yeah, this... Oh my god. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure this out in deck building, like what to cut. Uh, Touch the Spirit Realm is out, that's for sure. Maybe a staff. Ugh, that hurt. And then I play 16 lands. Yeah, this is awesome. The Stoneforge is also... No, not with Skull Clamp. It's not cuttable. Oh my god, I even get Bodyguard. But I don't even think Bodyguard can make this deck. Like, that's not reasonable. I just have everything for the white deck. So, let's see. Main deck Containment Priest. It's kind of a good hedge, I feel like. 16 lands. I'm going to have two four drops. I have a little bit of cycling in Thraben and Novice. Same with Skullclam and Copter. Yeah, this is this is amazing. Okay, let's see if we can uh, make this, this deck justice. We got the perfect white deck, aside from power, I guess. And uh, yeah, let's see what the opposition has to say about that. See you for the matches. All right, round one is upon us here. I'm on the play, playing perfect mono white. But, uh, yeah, this hand is not perfect. One land, I can't keep it. Um, well, do I have enough one drops to kind of keep it going until second land arrives? <laughs> Let's see. Um, so I can go turn one, whatever, Thraben. Turn two, figure. Turn three, plow the opponent's creature. And I stay afloat. Okay, I'm actually willing to give this hand a go to see if I can stay afloat here until the second land arrives. I believe when I find the second land... I can play Thalia, I can crack Clue, so maybe that's maybe that's a good one.
the opponent's uh, username might be uh, a secret message about my opening hand. But let's see. Yeah, it's very, very tempting here because I just need one land to be super competitive. Chrome Mox. Hmm. Let's see what the opponent has for us here. Hopefully something that dies to source to plowshares. Oh, that's... Hmm, wonder, wonder what that is. Could be Orcish Bowmasters. I draw the land like a champ, so now at least we have a game. If that is Orcish Bowmasters, what else could it be? It could just be... Like, I don't know, demand answers, two mana removal, stuff like that. I'm gonna play the Thalia. I'm I'm ready to get Bowmastered here. That's like Okay, so it is let's see. Oh, okay, it was an edict. Okay, that's cool. So the Thalia in play is hopefully gonna delay the opponent a little bit here. Shock themselves. Means they have a play. Three mana bit of reunion. That'll do it. The tally hits the yard. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too confident about this. Adversary, that doesn't help me. Um hmm. I yeah, I, I think I should just attack here. If the opponent makes an Atali, I hope I need to hope they have like bad hits. Then I can plow it end of turn. And if I draw land, I can start, like, adalining. I think that's, like, my, my way to... to stand a chance this game. If my opponent does not reanimate the Atali, I can just crack the clue and move on. And kind of have the same objective, getting to three lands and trying to kill my opponent. Is this Necromancy? Oh, it's Liliana. Liliana of the Veil is annoying here. So, Thalia hits the bin. I really feel like I need a land here. I hit the land, okay. Mm. Maybe it's Adeline or Spellbinder. Maybe it's actually Spellbinder because that, that even like disrupts the opponent and then I can Adeline with Pseudo Haste next turn. Get a 1-1 one, one right away. Let's see what the opponent has here. Wow. Ah, I see. They, the opponent needed to clear the Thalia because... Um, if my opponent hits spells off its holly, they can't cast them because of Thalia, but yeah, I, I make the Necromancy too, too more expensive here, maybe that doesn't even do anything but let's see let's see what they hit on its holly could be very bad, Containment Priest from my side of the table and Recurring Nightmare from his side of the table. So, could be worse, could be worse. Recurring Nightmare hits the battlefield. Let's see if the opponent also plays Containment Priest. I don't think they will, because with that card in play, Nightmare doesn't do anything. Oh, okay, I see, because they can just sacrifice to Nightmare. Okay, got it, yeah. Definitely a good play then. So now we both discard a card. Hmm. A bit figure of destiny. I feel like I have good enough things to do. So now that that draw is not terrible. I can elite spellbinder down the Liliana. And then I can go play. Hmm, maybe it's off. And then plow the Atali. I think that's a decent turn. The opponent has Ophiomancer left in hand. So I'm trying to build as much flying power as possible.
Yeah, Black Red Reanimator is definitely always a tough match. I'm really happy about the Containment Priest. I was lucky to wheel in the draft. Opponent attacks for two. I would imagine Opiomancer hits the field. Ah, okay, this is smart. This is smart play from the opponent. They can then sacrifice the priest to get Ophiomancer into play. Bizarre with Recurring Nightmare already in play is uh, quite nasty. Recurring Nightmare. Hmm. So maybe I'm supposed to... Yeah, I think I should just heal as much damage as possible in the air. Try and... Win fast. Let's see. Play that with one counter on it. Through. Attack for eight. Discard a land. Totally fine. I think that's like my best move to try and to try and win this way. Wonder if my opponent was supposed to upkeep activate bizarre. I've never had this situation happen before, but it could very well be. Now uh, the opponent can attack for three, then use recurring nightmare, sack a snake to bring back Voidwalker. So the opponent's kind of trying to race. Here's a Voidwalker, here's a nightmare. It looks like the opponent has one more turn of, you know, digging. Mm. Let's play Adeline. Let's play Usher. Let's crew with Usher. I also get a token here. I don't know if I don't know if that helps the clock, but we'll take it. Discard planes, exiled for Voidwalker. It's a two-two, so the opponent blocks. They go to six. Pass, and now the opponent needs a good, very good card. Bazaar gets activated. Did they do it? Did they find a big flyer? You can say that. <laughs> they definitely found a big flyer. Hmm, that is very bad for me. Archon. That is very bad. Kind of cool combo. Bizarre digging like freely with Recurring Nightmare. I like that. So the opponent can redeploy. Oh, they can even give haste. Jesus, I forgot. Totally forgot about that. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Ah, okay. So yeah, I got I got crushed in the end there. Felt good along the along the way. That's sometimes how it goes. Hmm. Hmm. So do we have any card here that simply just doesn't do anything or is like extremely underwhelming? I think it's fine. I still like my deck, but we need to kind of kill this this deck quickly. We can't we can't sit around. Okay, the sand is fine. I have some some good stuff up the curve. I can start drawing extra cards with Glimmer Lens and Copter. I wonder which one I start with. Maybe it's just Smuggler's Copter because it also plays the best against removal. Emperor was probably a fine draw. Let's see. If I hit the land, great. If I don't, I can just bin it to uh, the Copter. 
Mm -hmm. Better reunion. I, I really love that card. It's just like so such good utility. And if you already have the fatty, it's insane. Like just if you've been, yeah, this is the nightmare for me. So now the opponent is threatening it like a hasty Atraxa. It's uh, super tough. So I think the right play here is go lens through. Draw. Hmm. Maybe Atraxa is quite bad. Uh, Emperor is quite bad here because Atraxa has Vigilance, so I'm never going to, you know, catch it off guard. I'm going to play a Novice Inspector. I prioritize having power in play over, you know, grind. Here's the Necromancy. Ah. That's the dream for the opponent. Super awesome. So just imagine they hit a Mox here and the Atraxa becomes uh, haste. Ooh, they did hit a Mox. Ah, this is, this is great. This is why you play cube, right? You do something broken and then it's like, oh yeah, I even play a Mox so I can attack for seven this turn. Take this game totally out of reach. The opponent put Liliana, Chrome Mox, Swamp, Damnation, Fatal Push into hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm not winning this game. Ah, yeah, that's that's just beautiful magic. My deck, my deck's countermeasure for stuff like that was splash blue, trying to have spells pierce at the right time. It was uh, having containment priest before this happens. Very bad for me. <laughs> okay, two more guys to the yard. Okay, okay. So the opponent didn't want to give haste, so that just means they have something you know better coming. I would guess. Huh. Council's Judgment. Hmm. I'm going to try and destroy it. Then I'm getting ready to get Fatal Pushed. Maybe I should get ready to declare attacks here. Yeah, that's the right play. Because then my opponent will kill the rebel before declaring attacker, so I can then crew with that. So, yeah, it's slightly better. And if they don't push, I draw a card. But yeah, the, the Holy Trinity there with Gristlebrand, Italia, Trax, and Liard, it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look good. So let's attack for four. I don't even know what the, the dream is here. Okay. Maybe Skull Clamp isn't the best. I can go Land Spirit here. Yeah, my, my deck is pretty awesome, but it's not awesome against turn three Atraxa. It's not awesome against turn three Itali, turn whatever, Hasted Archon. That's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes it's smooth sailing, you dodge like the broken stuff, you ride towards the sunset and you you say you're the greatest. Sometimes you get destroyed by, by fast brokenness. That's all part of the Vintage Cube experience. And to be honest, I like, I like both. I like both aspects. Archon, Mind Twist, Swamp. You know what would be the most awesome? That would be Living Death right now. Three mana. Is this just Deploy Nightmare Pass? Oh, it's Corpse Dance. <laughs> Corpse Dance. All right. Stack a creature. Discard a card. Lose some life. Yeah, that's a good spell. It's a three mana. Heal 12. Wrath the opponent. Mind Twist the opponent. Pretty great card. So I'm now, I'm now down to eight. And the opponent just draws an extra swamp for good measure. Huh. So I draw Thalia. Let's screw. And track. 
draw. Containment Priest is not bad. Now I need my opponent not to do anything broken for one turn, and then maybe I have a shot. It's a big maybe, though. It's a very big maybe. Opponent activates Czar. Pretty good card when you have full grip. Wheel of Fortune, double land, hits the bin. And, okay, Orkish Bowmasters, killing the Thalia. And is that Recurring Nightmare for the remaining three mana? That would be Jeff's Kiss. Ah, love it. Good games, great deck. Yeah, we, we definitely got destroyed this match, but it was... At least it was, like, cool stuff happening on the other side of the table. Whew, what a beating. Um, I'm going to take a small break here, and then I'll see you guys for the next one. Okay, we're back for round two. I had some stuff to take care of, but uh, now I'm ready to hopefully bounce back after that brutal loss around one against Reanimator. I'm on the play here. I have a decent hand. The thing is, once you already have four lands, I really don't want to see the fifth land, so... Yeah, I guess my land spell ratio from the top of my deck will uh, have some say in my fate. Oof, still don't care at it. I can't get plowed. Can't get plowed, unfortunately. Oof, yeah, there's the fifth land. So now I have to think about either going adversary pass or holding a plow and pass. So let's see. The dream is my opponent plays like a semi-big creature. I plow it in a turn, then I untap and counsel's judgment to carry it. it. And the longer I wait with the adversary, the better it becomes. Yeah, I'll, I'll try that. But it's definitely not ideal. Like, ideally, I have some, some cheap creatures, and then once I play adversary, the, the overrun slash lord effect, whatever you want to call it, can, uh, can do good things. There's Augur. The opponent found a land off the top. That's bad news for me. Hmm. Yeah. I'll try. I'll try and get rid of their value creature. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. This 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 could be a bad play, but I feel like I'm in terrible shape here after drawing two lands that I kind of need to make my opponent not, you know, play more magic. There's a land. There's yeah, just one land. One more land. Okay, fair enough. So I guess the land destruction play didn't exactly work. There's a Blossoming Tortoise, so let's see. Take a land from the yard into play. Okay. Maybe maybe that card is acceptable. Hmm. Play Adversary. I now have a 4-2, my land is a 3-3. Three, three. Ophiomancer is very annoying now because it's just like the death touch, the death death touch creature is uh, dominating the ground here. Unfortunately, there's a Thalia. Really not a not the ideal card right now. I guess it is a three two with first strike. So yeah, let's see, let's see. It doesn't disrupt the opponent, but it is a first striker. Seems like the opponent has cards of another color in hand. Just crack the clue right away, see what's up. Blade Splicer, that's not bad. So now the cool thing is Blade Splicer says all golems have first strike, so not only do I have a 4-4 first strike here, I also have a... 3-3 three, three first striking land, so next turn I can start attacking with my first strikers. That's kind of cool. If the opponent has some kind of removal, they can try and blow me out. Um, but I think I'm ready for that. Get lost is a good draw here in case something bad happens. Here's a golem. First strike, first strike, first strike.
Maybe the Death Toucher is just jumping. The opponent takes six damage. I think my opponent has like blue cards in hand. Okay. I don't mind that. Maybe the opponent's missing the fact that it has first strike, but let's see. Uh, do I play that land? I think I'll play that land. Oh, I play Smogless Copter. I shouldn't have played that land. Could have killed my opponent's Opium Answer, but I'm actually okay in this situation. I would rather have removal for something big that takes over the game. It's always funny when parts like uh, when Mutavolt has some kind of synergy with creature types. I remember in the previous cube there was the warrior, Najila, so all of a sudden you were attacking with one more warrior, stuff like that. It was kind of cool. There's also, what's it called? The 2 1 Magda. When you tap a dwarf and it's like a lord, you get pressure. There's some stuff. Okay. Mana Crypt. I'm scared about this. Maybe I'm getting Crater Hoofed? Hmm. Wonder why my opponent played out Mana Crypt. Much mana. 1, 2, 3, plus 4, plus 1. That's 8. Hmm. Maybe the opponent's saving up for Portal to Phyrexia? That would be extremely annoying. So let's see, what can we do? Can we do anything nice here? Mm. I think I am supposed to hang on to that removal and just take this slow and steady. Stoneforge Mystic. So if I go Stoneforge Mystic, mm, I can, can I also equip Glimmer Lens? I can, but then I can't attack with uh, Mutable, so I think this is more important. I still like attacking with the first strikers. Then I can go second main phase, Stoneforge, Glimmer Lens, play, play both of them out. I'm trying to think why the opponent played that Mana Crypt, and without the Mana Crypt, my opponent had 8 mana, so I'm thinking it's something that costs 9 mana or more. So with the Thali attacks, it's 9 mana. Uh, sorry, 10. So yeah, it's, uh, there's also some Eldrazi's, I guess. Unfortunately, some of those are indestructible, so I can't kill it with Get Lost. But I have to play my chance here. So against the cards I'm thinking about, it's good to play Stoneforge. What? Why not a block with the snake? Okay, I think I hold up Lens now. Uh, no, not so. Uh, I hold up Get Lost. I'm thinking a bit about something like Crater Hoof now, but m losing, losing to Mana Crypt, why? At least take the Chum Block and get the free creature. I wonder what the opponent's plan was there. They could be just missing the fact that Crypt could kill them, of course. But not blocking. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. It's probably like Crater Hoof Behemoth, to be honest. Because I think Crater Hoof Behemoth, let me just check here. I don't think Crater Hoof gives haste to other creatures. I think it only has haste itself, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean that 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 could explain something. Okay, so it's definitely Crater Hoof on my on my radar here. I like Winds of Abandon against a deck like that where games can games can go long and I might need to break out of a stall at some point. Maybe I was just lucky that the Thalia was decent. I think it's actually quite bad against the deck. I like Priest because that deck might have like Natural Order or whatever. Okay. Oof. Good old lo one lander here on the draw. It has two fort drop and a six drop, so I'm not going to keep that hand. It's just too far away from doing anything. This is cool. Hmm. So what do I get rid of here? It could get rid of the Emperor, even though that is a kind of a great card. Hmm. Get rid of 
I don't know, Giver, maybe? Okay, I'll try and get rid of Giver. Really not sure about that. I would feel bad about getting rid of a land. But then again, if I draw a couple of lands over the next couple of turns, it would look like a genius if I did that. Let's see if the Caracas can do anything this game. That would be cool. Flower Elves. That's fine. Copter, great draw. Turn one Novice Inspector. Turn two Copter. Turn three Spellbinder. Turn four Emperor, maybe. That's the plan anyway. Oh, I love that card. The Preacher. The Breacher is a good one. Let's play Smuggler's Cup, though. Can't block. The opponent's going to draw an extra card and get a 1 1 Life Linker. Pretty cool, the Preacher, when life totals are equal. Yeah, I like that card. I think it had its breakout in Pioneer and the Vampires deck that CFB brought for the PT. Yeah, it's just a solid cube card. Like, it's a good 3-drop. If you untap with it, you're in good shape. The One Ring, even. So now I can't... Spellbinder. Hmm. Can't Spellbinder. Getting a Flyer is still valuable. I'm actually gonna go... Oh, let's see. Maybe I go... Bigger... Brew attack to just get the loot in. I think that's reasonable. It's not the best in the world, but I think it's fine. Draw. Lens is a decent draw. Maybe I can get rid of the Spellbinder. Then I play Lens now. I want to develop the Muta Vault. Keep the Caracas a secret in case my opponent has like some big legend. This is going to be very tough. Turn 2 Preacher, turn 3 the One Ring. When it has infinite cards to work with. Here's Fast Bond. Let's see what we're getting crushed by here. Once the green deck is like up and running, I think I'm in bad shape. I guess the One Ring is just the difference here, right? Brutality. Did they discard and look at my hand? I think so, yeah. So no targets. Now they see the Emperor, which is gonna... take care of the Preacher. Pretty nice situation for the opponent here, with the life totals being the same again. Ooh. So if they if they attack with Preacher here, it's it's a misplay. Okay, they don't. Then it's not a misplay. Hmm. So if I attack with I'm not gonna attack with two things here, I think. I'm only gonna attack with the copter. Feel fine about that. I, I mean I think that's all I can do. Try and Tempo my opponent out of the air. Ooh, nice one. Um, sure. Go get a planes. No attacks. Now, I'm just gonna pass. The opponent attacks with Preacher. I'm killing it with Wanderer. But yeah, this is a this is a problem. The opponent's drawing a lot of cards. Okay. Can't complain about that. I'm not scared of cycling. Also, the opponent has some life linkers from the vampires, but suicide attacking those, not the most exciting thing to be doing, but it is viable if you just want to stay alive. Let's see. One has three cards left. The opponent attacks. They get a 1-1. They don't. 
Okay. Hmm. So question is, am I supposed to crack the clue or flash in the the emperor? Maybe I just go emperor. That's decent. And I can make a 2-2 before my turn. Let's see. It looks, looks like the opponent might have some removal. That's totally fine. Bitter Triumph. Okay. I will create a 2-2 on the way out. So with the one ring in play, it's obviously a good trade for the opponent, but that's how it is. Usher, not the most exciting draw. The 2-4 on the other side kind of has this game locked down. I'm not yet ready to do some like super desperate attacks. But I highly doubt I'm going to outdraw the one ring here. But who knows? When it's down to 12, next turn it'll be down to 8. I think that's my way to win this game. Maybe if I draw the the three one, the adversary, I can kind of get a good alpha strike in. Little one safe keeper, so that probably means the opponent plays uh Titania, which would just crush me in a heartbeat here. Opponent goes down to eleven with a ring out, so let's see, mana ball, sure. Maybe I'm getting crater hoofed now. Seven, eight, nine. I'm not getting crater hoofed. Could get portaled. Or green sun zenith. Green sun zenith for crater hoof would make a lot of sense with how the last game went. Yeah, green sun zenith. The opponent has five creatures in play. A big, big issue. So. I highly doubt we can survive this. The opponent's attacking for 16 plus 13, that's 29, and I have 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 toughness. That's definitely not enough if my opponent decides to attack with everything. opponent doesn't have any legends in play, so Caracas is not doing anything. All right, so crater, the Crater Hope read was correct from last game. That's at least something. But, whew, yeah, that card is... That card makes it so that I can't play slow. Like, then I just lose. I need to close out the game. So let's try and focus on that for game three. I have some good cards here. Evasive Creatures, Bunch of Removal, stuff like Parallax Wave and Winds of Abandon to, you know, lock up the game. Okay, I have a pretty good curve of creatures here. And I believe it's the first time we were on the play, so maybe, just maybe, we can put a little bit of speed into this game. And then if the opponent stabilizes, once we have six mana, this card usually does the trick against green decks. Raven getting in there, but it's good that I have a random random creature turn one because then Glimmerland starts drawing cards. So the dream is the opponent doesn't do anything of consequence here. I can delay my opponent, draw cards. That would be awesome. Worst thing we saw out of the opponent's deck is something like Mox and then the Preacher. Then I'll have to use Winds of Abandon early as like a path to exile, but I mean. Yes, guess I'll take it. Is this some kind of removal? Removal would be annoying. Then the opponent would stop up my draw engine. Ooh. Okay. So Glimmerland's down, and the opponent gets a swamp in hand. I still have some power in play, so not all that bad. I'll go Elite Spellbinder. Huh. Which card do I want to make two uh, more expensive? Probably the One Ring, right? 
Or is this some one of those games where the One Ring is actually a, a hidden trap? Let's see. I attack my opponent down to 16 now. Pass. The opponent plays Brutality. They do gain some life, then they play One Ring. No, I think it's just One Ring. So now the opponent can go Brutality on... Brutality on the Spellbinder, and even take a look at my hand if they want to. Get rid of the Wind. The opponent had some good interaction this game to stem the bleeding. Let's see if they discard. They do discard. And, okay, fair enough. Let's see what the clue can find me. Okay. So, no legends there. I'm just going to flash the Containment Priest. Pack my opponent to 13. And then the problem is that 3-3 three, three is just stopping my terrible aggro here cold. I need to find, like, file, counsel's judgment, etc. Okay. That card is also decent at stopping aggro. Still gonna play it out. And Selfless Spirit, okay. Selfless Spirit is at least a flyer. And it might be so that I can make some... Like, attack with all later and save everything if I need to to force through the last points of damage, but let's see. There's Llanowar Elf. The opponent's saving for the One Ring right now. The One Ring costs six mana. Thanks to good old Paolo Vitor. Blossoming Tortoise. Here it is. Putting a Swamp into play. Milling over a nice escape card. Yeah. This is going to be a tough one. Skyclave is good. What can Skyclave do? Right now, not much. Mm. It can kill the One Ring later. I think that's good. I think I should hang on to it. It's actually tough because the One Ring might also be the way I win this game, but who knows. You put in middle over anime dead and they have Entomb in hand, so maybe nothing broken is going to happen. Let's see. They have Entomb and what left? I don't know about the last card. Could be a land. So now most likely, the One Ring is going to hit the field. And 11. Hmm. I don't even know. I might let the One Ring stay in play. I feel like I'm really not winning this game if I try, try and aggro the opponent. Yeah, I'm definitely going to sacrifice this so my opponent doesn't gain any life to get rid of the the adventure card for good. If the opponent kills my only flyer, then go the One Ring. Oh, Grave Titan. That is uh, even worse. Definitely worse for me. Smuggler's Copter, sure. So now I'll play that. Probably kill maybe just Tortoise. But this is a tough one. The, the, the copter need to attack too many times, I think. Hmm, let's see. Can I draw? If I draw the adversary, copter attacks for five. I think that's my only out. And then kind of survive two attacks. But I guess the one ring has something to say about that, huh? Yeah, I think the opponent has too much, too much stuff here. What else did we find here? Opponent has Entomb and two unknowns in hand. Ophiomancer. Yeah, that's definitely a good one. Let's see. I guess I'm not blocking with that card. Hmm. Winds of Abandon is gone. I have Parallax Wave. Okay. Parallax Wave is my my way into this game, I think. Maybe I don't have to chum block yet. Okay. Sometimes in, in situations like this, it's pretty good to think about, like, what's your outs? 
and uh, Parallax Wave, definitely one for me right now. So unfortunately, that means I'm, I have to do this like terrible attack. I just go one card deeper. I don't deal any damage because of the one ring, but okay, Stone Forge. Let's Stone Forge for Skull Clamp. Mm, yeah, I'll just equip Thraben. I think that's fine. I'll play the land because now I think my, my only plan is something like Chumbluck to not die. Whatever I need to do. Draw some cards and then try and Parallax Wave. The sad thing is that I might have to, to block with the Containment Priest, even though that's a combo with Parallax Wave. But maybe I just lose to Crater Hope and things are easy here. Let's see, 9 mana. Okay, the opponent might make a big mistake here. Green Sun Zenith. If this is Green Sun Zenith, I'm uh, pretty happy. If this is Hardcast Crater Hoof, I'm not that happy. What's it gonna be? Maybe the opponent realized in time that Containment Priest is pretty good against Zenith. Let's see. Block Grave Titan. If, as long as I block Grave Titan, I don't take lethal. So I can actually, can actually keep my Containment Priest in play, which is kind of cool. Opponent's at 10 and they lose 2 life. Hmm. It's tough to imagine me winning this game. But I think it involves Parallax Wave. The opponent has a bunch of options. I only know about the Entomb. So right now, the opponent needs to worry about not dying to double ring trigger, double copter attack. So they are... There's a, there's a sense of urgency here, I would say. Here's Woe Strider from the yard. That does work, does work because it's cast. Um, so, Containment Priest doesn't stop Uro either. But it does stop something like, I don't know, Vengevine, Bloodgast, you name it. Opponent's getting in for a ton of damage here. I think I'm just going to take take 8 and draw 2 cards. Come on, deck. So funnily enough, I just noticed this. The opponent can sacrifice this Titan to make me not draw. Ooh. The Sage was a good one here because that was my whole plan. I even... Played out the land that I could have used for Copter Beats because I was uh, banking on drawing extra cards and I wanted all my land drops. Yeah, this is brutal. This is brutal. And there's a Preacher. Oof. The One Ring is one hell of a card. It can really just... You just get more cards to play, and it's very, very tough to beat. Even with the pseudo time walk effect if, from when you play it, it's so brutal. Let's see. Can we do it? The opponent gets a snake, and we draw Novice Inspector. Let's draw a card. And it's a planes. Okay, that'll that'll do it for this this draft. I went 0 and 2 with a white deck that I really really liked. A white deck I would take any day of the week, especially when I'm playing in the mox. If I get this deck, I'm ready to battle everyone. But yeah, sometimes you lose to better decks, better draws, whatever the case may be. Um, here we just got pretty like out out manned with acceleration, out um, hard uh, hard quantity with 
the one ring and preacher stuff like that and uh, the opponent had a lot of good removal to to kind of make my deck look like a silly deck and their deck look like uh yeah the best thing you can be doing in the format that's what happens sometimes round one we didn't stand a chance against reanimator let's be honest um we had like decent draws but they just went over the top and crushed us that's what happens sometimes i like both i like getting destroyed and i like destroying the opposition it's uh yeah it's just great magic for me all around i hope you guys had a good time today that'll do it and uh, see you guys tomorrow